Hello everybody. It is Sunday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Sunday, right? And it is live with Carla Nicole once again. We are at it. I hope everybody is enjoying their their weekend or enjoyed their weekend. Um, Sunday comes so fast, does it not? I tell you, um, well, I kind of messed up today and I forgot my, um, my paper. So I'm going to have to come back and watch this later and catch up on my notes. But, um, I wanted to, um, welcome everybody. Um, so like I said, um, this is still part of the weight, uh, the alone series. Um, and with this, uh, show the alone series, it is to encourage people that being alone doesn't mean you have to be lonely. Actually being alone, um, helps us to, um, work on self and improve ourselves um, while we do not have other obligations for someone else. So this is the perfect time to really focus on um, improving self and um, doing what's necessary to improve our lives. So um, that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so the topic today for the Alone series is... Um, Achieving self-control. So everybody grab your pens, get your pads out. Let's get started. I am going to take notes later. I just did not manage to bring my journal like I thought I did. So I have to come back later and, and catch up on the notes. But please write down a loan series. And this time our topic is talking about how to achieve, okay, self-control. Hey, Sami. Hey, Bo, glad to see you guys here. Um, so focus on how do we achieve self-control. So first I want to talk about um, self-control. A lot of times, you know, uh, things happen to where uh, we least expect things to happen. And we're like, man, I thought, you know, everything was going great. I thought everything was getting in alignment. You know, I, I had high hopes that things were going to go great and then something takes a detour you know life happens things happen disappointments happen um you know we have and we end up getting different things that we just so we plan on having um different things where we're like okay you know we had all these things going on everything was perfect everything was going well and then like i said all of a sudden there's a detour in life, right? And you just least expect it. So I want to talk about having self-control or achieving it because, you know, having self-control and taking control of self and making sure we master self is vitally important when we go through challenges and um, negatives that happen in life. If we don't focus on making sure we are grounded in learning how to have self-control what happens is our lives get way beyond what we could have ever imagined happens. First of all, I want to talk about attitude changes, um, tempers. These are huge things that we have got to be able to learn how to master. Um, one thing that I've noticed that even for me personally, I've had issues where I would get an attitude or upset and you know my temper would flare my mouth would just go uh without really totally thinking about what is it i'm saying am i being too abrasive at people without really sitting down and looking at me you know i'm expecting people to be treat me the way i want to be treated but am i really treating others the same way no i'm being abrasive i'm being bitter to, towards people I'm being disrespectful you know and things of that nature so we have to be mindful that how we treat others is huge for how we are going to be able to handle our lives so it's very important that we think about our attitude number one so make sure like I said you're writing this down so attitude is very important and our tempers is another thing a lot of times we don't really understand how important it is to master our tempers and our 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 um attitudes so think about this really fast you know whenever we get into um 
a situation where uh, we are not happy with the outcome of whatever it is. It could be the outcome of work. It could be the outcome of your relationship going on. It could be an outcome of, of different things in your life. And you're like, man, it's not going the way I want it to go. So I'm going to just now, you know, you're letting stuff boil. Here's the, here's the most important thing. When we allow things to fester and we allow infernos to boil in our soul to where we're just getting angrier and angrier and then it just blows up and then our mouths fly off the temper. We just go off the, off the handle. We yell at people. We disrespect people. Um, we're so angry at everything that we are just acting a fool. We need to make sure that we have control of that. We have to start paying attention to how we are treating other people. And we also have to be mindful that just because you're angry or you're upset or you're having a bad day does not mean or does not constitute a reason for you to act ignorant and, and angry and belligerent to other people. That is not okay. But a lot of times we'll say, well, it's not my fault, you know, I've had this going on, or I was angry at the time, or PMS, we can come up with all kinds of excuses, well, PMS, or my hormones are imbalanced, or man, my girl tripped out, so I, I you know, I, I just got upset. Listen, we have more control over who we are, and what we do, and how we act, than we give ourselves credit for. We have to be mindful that, no, it's not okay to go out here and just act a fool. We have to start being on top of ourselves. Like for me, okay? For instance, you know, anytime I would have issues with my, with the guys I was involved with, I, I get angry and mad and, 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 and have prejudgments and be prejudiced about something or feeling some type of way about something or be jealous about something. And I have these issues. These are my own internal issues that I had. And, and I would act a certain way, okay, in my attitude. Or I would say certain things to, to bring about an argument with, my, with, with the dude I was with. So I would just do all this extra stuff. I had to come up with a plan. You know, there's no reason why you're in a relationship with people. And I'm talking about not just love relationships, but friendships with people. And you can't get along because you're constantly trying to make an argument out of everything. Everything doesn't constitute an argument. We don't always have to argue about everything we disagree with. Sometimes we have to sit down and say, you know what? I don't have to fight about everything. But some of us feel like if we don't feel like, you know, we're being heard, we got to fight to be heard. But that's not true. Do you know how powerful silence is? I mean, please get with me on this. Do people really know how important silence is? Do you know how much, really how much you gain by hushing your fight inside? It's, un it's unbelievable how much you gain in power when you start to not show up to every fight, not make everything an argument. You find yourself like, man, I didn't realize that I'm really, I'm really able to enjoy now enjoy my friendships enjoy my relationships i don't have to fight we don't we don't have to fight every time we're upset let me tell you a little secret and i don't give secrets much but i'm gonna give y'all a secret because i love y'all let me tell you what i do <laughs> i got i got a friend that i'm really close with and he'll tell you i used to have a lot of tantrums ladies a lot of tantrums if i didn't get my way I was always crying and heaping and hollering. Why can't you do this for me? Why can't you do that for me? Until finally I said, let me hush my fight. Everything doesn't require that. So let me think about something. I began to personify my spirituality. And like I tell people, I would knock on Jesus' door every day. Like, God, please, do you know what's happening? I'm upset. I'm angry and I would cut up just all kinds of tantrums and mad and furious and I began to find out that my tantrums and my anger and my tempers would start to fade because I stopped fighting with everybody else and began to go to my spiritual guide for my issues and it doesn't mean hey talent coach it doesn't mean I I had to fight 
with people, it mean it meant that I had to fight inside. And then I began to create. So, for instance, when I would go through my issues with with anger, okay, uh, jealousy, um, frustration, or parenting, or issues, you know, I began to figure out ways to, how can I do this where I can try to encourage other people rather than always showing up for a fight and getting my boxing gloves out and being ready to start hitting people because I'm angry, I'm upset. I don't like what's going on. We don't have to do that. We can find a means to um, alleviate a lot of our anger and our tempers and our flying at the mouth so exquisitely by turning into your spirituality and finding a means to channeling what are you really whining about <laughs> you know what I'm saying if I was in a relationship with somebody and I'm mad about something half the time it didn't have anything to do with what I was arguing with him or her about it was actually all about something else that had nothing to do with it. it it was about something else that had nothing to do with it so I had to sit down and say hold on a minute let me silence this can I learn to achieve my self-control Am I able to say something to someone without being belligerent? Am I able to do that? Am I able to come up with a plan of figuring out how can I convey certain things if I disagree or I don't like something? Do I know how to say something in a tactful way where it's received better than coming all up off the top of the head and saying how I want to say it and I don't care if you like it, but this is where I'm coming from? We don't have to always show up to a fight. You know, years ago, <laughs> I laugh about it now, but years ago, my mom and I were in that stage where, you know, I was arguing with my mom. She was like, you know, that's unacceptable. We were back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You know, you're a teenager. You just can't get it right. Your mom's not seeing eye to eye with you. You're trying to gain your independence. So you're fighting back and forth with mom and huh and hon. And, and my dad went out and he bought us both boxing gloves one time. And she and I both stopped arguing fussing and fighting and we began to discuss well mom I just I feel a different kind of way I, my, my perspective is this I just feel like you're not hearing me and so it wasn't always the fact that we had to fight all the time to get the point across sometimes we just have to sit down and say maybe we're just seeing things from a different perspective maybe I need to allow someone to think differently than me because that that was really what I was fighting over I wanted people to everybody to see it my way but you know what I can't have everybody see everything my way I have to get over that you know having a father that is very matter-of-fact he would say yes or he would say no and it would be that's it there was no no with an explanation it was just no so there was no arguing. There was no coming back with, well, why not, or, or any of that. So I'm like, let me think of how I can become who I am, still have a voice, but learn how to do it with a little tact. Learn how to improve who I am and not try to um, forcefully have other people think the way I think because I believe I'm the right way or this is the only way. So it's not true. We have to learn to um, adhere to other people being who they are, okay? We cannot always believe that it's our way or no way. Achieving self-control is not the easiest thing to do, but it can be achieved. And how it can be achieved is learning to not show up to every fight. Some people, now let me tell you this real quick, some people know how to get under your skin they know what it takes it's almost like they've masterminded what what exactly they can push on you to get you to go off and snap and it's like how do they know that this is gonna have me go into uh, high blood pressure how do they how did they know that they were gonna they're, they're gonna trigger this in me and then who's who, whose fault is that though we got to sit down and think about that whose fault is it that we allow someone to push our buttons and then we snap whose fault is it that we allowed it us we have to learn like no 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 no, baby girl you want to 
I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to trigger me to act a fool. But no, not today. I'm going to get silent. And I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to I'm going to hush my I'm going to hush my rage. That is not easy to do. But boy, there's a beauty in it. You hear me? When you can hush your rage and say, "Not today." You don't get that power over me today. I don't care if you feel like, you know, you said what you wanted to say, and that's okay. This even applies to family, friends, boyfriends, girlfriends. We have to sit down and say, "You know what? Every time we allow somebody to take our peace, they're robbing us. They're robbing us, man. We got to get away from allowing people to do that. So in order to achieve self-control, we have to do what? We have to learn to look at self and say, listen, I know you get angry. I know you're hot tempered because we got to watch what labels we give ourselves also. A lot of times we'll say, well, I'm hot tempered or actually I'll go off at the mouth. Don't let nobody, don't let nobody uh, get it confused. I will go off at the mouth and all that. We say stuff like that, right? And we don't even technically even think about the fact that we've projected that out of our mouths and then we end up holding on to that label. I'm hot tempered. You don't have to be that. You don't have to be hot tempered. You can change it in an instant. Just like that. You can change I'm, I'm hot tempered. You know what you can say? I'm mild mannered. Change it to that. That doesn't sound as tough though, does it? Because sometimes we believe what labels we give ourselves shows a toughness, right? It shows a toughness. It shows that we are tough by saying we're hot tempered. You're not going to get over on me. That's not necessarily true. There's a lot of powerful people that don't say much, but when they speak, you hear them. So sometimes the power is in the silence. Get rid of all the anger. Get rid of all the hurts. And understand this. A lot of times hurts are buried under that anger. But we don't want to look at that, right? That's not something we want to go and dive into. I'm angry right now. I'm mad. Hold on. Let's get past the anger and the hurt and the, and, and the mad. And let's look and see what is underneath that. What's underneath that anger? It's usually disappointment. Fear abandonment, sadness, jealousy. I can go on and on. There's a lot of stuff underneath our anger that has nothing to do with being mad. We're just mad at the time, yes. And don't get me wrong, we're all human. Every one of us, we all have said stuff. Man, I regretted that I said that. I should not have said that. I maybe should have, maybe I should have held on to saying those words, but I said it anyway, because what? My temper was flared. You know, um, I also do things with parenting. And I encourage parents like, look, if you have to put your hands on your child, please don't do that when you're angry. I know I've said that many times. Because why? It almost to the point when you're so angry, it blinds you. And you don't realize how rage can just make you do some off the wall stuff that you may never have done when you weren't angry. So I encourage parents, I'm like, man, don't spank that child while you're mad like that. You let yourself cool down first. And then, you know, if you want to spank at that point, then we got to allow ourselves the same, the same thing even in our anger personally. When we are that angry, even with our mates, if, with our kids, with our parents, with our sisters and siblings and brothers and stuff, we got to say, wait a minute. Let me, <laughs> let me hush my tongue. Now for me, because I walk in a spiritual, in a very spiritual, um, I have a very high spiritual life. I spend a lot of time in meditation and things like that. The spirit has actually came to me and said, shut your mouth. No, you're not allowed to say anything. And it took everything I had. Like I'm really angry right here. I want to say what I want to say. And the spirit's like, no. You must hush your mouth. This is not the time or the place for you to be doing all that. And I did. But it took what? Self-control. Yes, inhaling and ex exhaling, absolutely. Because if you don't inhale and exhale, you will find yourself in a position where you're like, man, I should have never said that. I should have never done that. Because see, it's not always... 
And these are old school things that, you know, my mom would say. It's not always what you say or how it's how you say it. Okay. So it's not always what you do, but how you do it. It's the same thing that applies here. We're not less of a person because we don't, we don't show up to every fight. There, when I was young, I think I was maybe about six or seven, and a little girl came over to my house. She wanted to fight me if my hair was longer. And I was like, what? Seriously? We laugh about that now, but yeah, she came to my house. She was like, well, if your hair is longer than mine, I'm going to fight you. Like, what? what? What does this have to do with anything? I didn't fight her. That's not, that's so silly. Who does that? Who shows up to someone's house to want to fight him over her hair length? That's not necessary. But how many people would have fought her over that? It's the people that just don't see past the, the, the end result. What am I gaining by fighting this fight here? What am I gaining by showing up and telling my man he ain't right, he ain't shit? What, is that, what am I gaining by that? And then the relationship goes awry. It's like, man, maybe I shouldn't have said that. So we have to learn to hush this, hush the mouth. And learn to look at anger as being hurt. There's something hurting you at the time when you're that angry. So give yourself a time to <clears throat> look at stuff. You know, I, I know you guys that have followed me for a long time know I have a 30-day challenge. My 30-day challenge is, you know, when you find something out that's so crazy, so upsetting, so I cannot believe this happened issue that comes up and I tell people all the time give yourself 30 days to understand that the, that the first day you hear something or the first day that something happens it may seem like it is the end of the world but by day 30 it, it isn't it's no longer that significant anymore why because you're allowing yourself time to really work through some things when you work through some things you learn okay you know what I just didn't see it from that perspective. I didn't give myself a chance to really um, see it for, for what it was. I got so angry that I didn't give myself a chance to really sit down and say, listen, maybe I'm seeing this wrong and maybe I need to give myself time. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of times we think that we have to answer now. A lot of times women, we as women, I'm going to pick on us a little bit. We want answers from our men. I want to know what this and this and this is. And he doesn't answer. And then it does what? It makes you madder, right? The rage gets higher. We get madder and madder and madder. Now we're really off the charts. Now he's just like, I don't have no answer for you. Because right now, whatever I say, you're going to take and make it worse than what it is. So it's like, we have to look at these things. We have to start seeing, okay, you know what? It gets to a point where we cannot constantly feel like we have to... Uh, adjust we have to do what we have to do we have to make it all out to be he's not this he's not that because he's not answering me maybe it's not the time and not always do we have to fight everything i just wanted to give you guys this today because i think a lot of times we um don't realize how much really we have control over ourselves we really have substantial amounts of control of our mouths over our emotions how we feel it's not always circumstantial like we tend to think well this happened so this happened it's not always that easy it's not always that clean cut sometimes things happen yes but when you learn to pause and think about it and allow it to penetrate in your soul you're like well you know what i guess Maybe I can see it from a different perspective. My anger didn't let me see something I missed. So I'm just trying to give you guys something that's important. I really hope this helps somebody. I really want you guys to think about how important you are. Understand that. You are just as important quiet as you are loud and, and, and abrasive. You're still important whether you're quiet or not. Sometimes we're, we're barking and, and yelling and jumping up and down because we want to be seen. We want to be heard. Right. If you want to be heard, right. Create. You can be heard amongst the, amongst the masses. Quiet. You don't have to do all that. 
and you'll find that you'll find that there's more peace in your soul and in your life when you stop all that yelling and screaming and arguing and getting all up in people's face, you'll be like, man, and not only that, people receive you better. When you're less abrasive, when you're someone that can, that, that, that can be received well, more people want to be around you. You're like, wow, you're more of an agreeable person. You're more of a likable person. People want to be around you because what? You're someone that's not always up to want to fight because it doesn't have to it doesn't have to take that to be explosive you don't have to do that to be expressive you don't have to do that to be important you can just be who you are be beautiful and even in disagreement you can learn to say hey give me some time to respond to this I, I don't feel like I'm gonna give you right now because I'm, I'm, I'm really upset or I'm angry or I don't feel like you're gonna hear me. So give me a time, give me time to come back to this. And then we can meet again on, on a different plane. But right now, what I'm gonna say to you is gonna be very ignorant. <laughs> it's not gonna be well received by you. And I may not even project what I'm trying to say properly. So give me some time. And when you do that, you'll find the power and how amazing you really are. Because there's a power in being tactful. When you're tactful, and you say some things, people are like, wow, that was well thought out. And I can respect that because you gave me how you really felt. I'm just saying, people, um, I hope this helps somebody. Please share this video because there's so many people out here that have tempers, have been hurt, have been unheard, or feel like they're out of control, that really don't know what to do with their anger and let them hear this because you know there's ways you can do it but sometimes you just gotta pause or you gotta be like I can't show up to this fight today I can't show up to that and then we have to learn how to say hey you can't just push all these buttons on me and I have to react to it because now what I'm allowing you to control me and I can't do that I have to now be in control of myself that's what self control is about right so let me go through the through the comments uh let's see here yes the Tory seal said these are simple but deep gems right here i appreciate that love um rebecca said preach yes love i'm just trying to get people to see how easy we can get so caught up in um being angry and and upset so um you know we need to get back to um self self-control and i think once we do that we we will have amazing um results by doing that um and then rebecca said you will you will you allowing people to push your buttons makes you a puppet absolutely power in silence yes there's a huge power in silence if we woosa and we don't allow someone to take over our emotions we have more control of it and we're like you know what i you actually get your power back you feel a, a sense of and a, a, almost like an energy surge when you don't do all this arguing and yelling at someone and you're like, oh my God, I didn't have to show up to the fight today and I feel wonderful. I'm able to tell that person, you know, right now is not the time for my response. So I'll be back at you and give you what my perspective is. And hopefully we can, we can, you know, revisit this topic or, or revisit this, this uh, point of view that it, it, it's so much more classy it's so less I mean your blood pressure is still normalized when you do this I'm telling you so um I thank you so guys I thank you guys so much for being here like I said be sure to share the video um you know because I do this every Sunday make sure you tell your friends to join hey listen I'm doing this every Sunday at 12 noon um this is a this is the, ah, this is called the alone series and um, the alone series is to help you to do work for you while you're alone while you don't have obligations to someone else and that is <laughs> in and of itself is not easy to do when you got somebody else you have to be tending to and taking care of but when it's just you you can actually do some things to work on you so this is what the alone series is for it's for those that are single those who are alone and need to get you know get their life back in balance because it can be and like I say just because you're alone doesn't mean you have to be lonely okay 
So I'm glad everybody was here. Give massive love to everyone. Thank you so much. We'll see you next Sunday. So take care, everybody. It's Carla Nicole signing off. Best kept. Have a good day. Bye.